We knew it was coming, and there's also breaking news from the Fed Reserve as it confirms another hefty interest rate increase. Now, the Fed raised its benchmark interest rate three quarters of a point, part of a most aggressive drive in three decades to tame that high inflation we've all been dealing with for months. The increase makes it more expensive to borrow money, which will impact your new mortgages, your auto loans, and oh, those credit cards. Business editor Rod Maloney tracking the news, the impact, and why the Fed is taking this step. So here is why all of this is happening. The very definition of inflation is too much money, right? Federal government, trillions of dollars put out chasing too few goods. Here's an example. I had a dental cleaning this morning. Came out with a toothbrush and toothpaste, but no dental floss or bag to put it in because there's a shortage. And that tells us our economy is burning too hot. How do you slow it all down? Well, the Fed raises interest rates to raise prices in order to slow things down. But inflation is eating into all of this. It's causing a real mess. And coming up on Local 4 News at 5 and again at 6, we're going to be talking about exactly how this affects you in your life. All right. Thank you, Rod. Right now, as the markets close, we're taking a look at how they're responding to this new rate increase. The Dow up 436 points. Strong earnings reports from companies like Microsoft and Google's owner, Alphabet, have also helped lift the markets. We'll be following this very closely. Okay, so in case you haven't heard, nobody claimed the Mega Millions jackpot last night. So take a look at the number. The next drawing will be worth more than $1 billion. Now, if you choose the cash option, it's still worth more than $600 million before taxes. Right now, the new jackpot would be the nation's fourth largest ever. But before you play, remember, the odds of winning are 1 in 302 million. The next drawing, Friday night. President Joe Biden walked into the Rose Garden today using his experience with COVID-19 to show Americans how far we have come and also reminding us of how we can fight the virus. Kimberly Gill joins us and Kim, we're told the president has now tested negative. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. That's right. We're told the president tested negative last night and again this morning. He just announced his diagnosis six days ago. He always had mild symptoms and was given the drug Paxlovid. Today, the president reminded Americans COVID is not going away, but the ability to protect yourself has come a long way in spite of emerging variants. BA5 means many of us are still going to get COVID even if we take the precautions. That doesn't mean we are we we're doing anything wrong. But our fight against COVID is making a huge difference. What's different now is our ability to protect ourselves from serious illness due to COVID. In fact, that's radically different today than it was just a year ago. The president repeated the steps all Americans can take. They, those steps include getting vaccinated and getting your boosters if and when you're eligible. He pointed out home tests are readily available and you can even get them free from the government. The president suggests you test yourself before or after big gatherings or when you'll be visiting people at high risk. Knowing your status can help slow the spread of COVID. And he reminded Americans it's still a good idea to wear face masks in crowded indoor locations. Plus, he pointed out you don't have to be the president to use any of these tools. President's doctor says he has completed his course of Paxlovid, has remained fever free for 36 hours and will now discontinue strict isolation measures. The president does plan to wear a well fitting face mask for five days anytime he's around other people. So Karen, that's the latest from the White House. Now back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. Well, the Senate just passed a bill to encourage semiconductor companies to build more chip plants here in the U.S. The final vote was 64 to 33, showing bipartisan support for the plan, which has been a priority for President Biden. The UAW released a statement saying in part the Chips for America Act is good for manufacturing workers as it would improve U.S. competitiveness and help ensure we do not have future shortages. You'll recall chip shortages have taken a bite out of the auto business this year. The bill now heads to the House. Spirit of Detroit is being used to transform the alleys in a few neighborhoods into works of art. Many of you might think of alleys only as places for dumping trash, but a new program might really change your way of thinking and give those neighborhoods something new to celebrate. Paula Tutman shows us how it all works. Detroit has been many things and has many personalities. The birthplace of the Motown sound and electronic music, the arsenal of democracy, of course, the Motor City known for manufacturing cars. And if you've traveled throughout the various neighborhoods, you could certainly believe that it is also the city of murals based on the incredible building art that can be found in nooks and crannies throughout Detroit's many communities.
And so cue that creativity when it comes to neighborhood alleys, like the one Zachary Hurd lives near. This neighborhood when we started was run, was run down, it was tore up, and our, our job vision was to make it more beautiful and safer for the kids to have somewhere to go and play. Today, Mayor Duggan, along with journalist turned director of arts and culture for the city of Detroit, Rochelle Riley, a new formal initiative to transform alleys into art places was announced. Artists want space and neighborhoods want their space to look pretty. And one of the things that we have an abundance of is alleys. You're seeing the murals across the city and they are now drawing tourists around the country uh, to see Detroiters expressing themselves. And uh, this is going to be uh, even more. Each neighborhood is going to be able to express their own uh, view and perspective and uh, people will want to go from one neighbor to another just to see uh, the beauty. This is the pilot phase, five alleys in Detroit. Places where neighbors have already started to clean up and beautify. $3 million of American Rescue Plan dollars allotted by the city council. Artists will be brought in. They'll collaborate with the neighbors and murals will be painted in the alleys. This is a sampling of what it'll look like. There'll be a theme all the way down the alley that the, communicate, the community will uh, meet with the artists and they'll agree on and then the artists will uh, proceed to paint it. But the project doesn't have to stop at five. If you live in a community and you want your community to be better or to look better, let us know. We will work with you however we can. But this is a pilot, so we're hoping to do many more of them. And so alleys, once the throwaway appendages of side streets, become viable destinations to see, marvel, be inspired, and of course, find the next. Paula Tutman, Local 4. And to get specific into the neighborhoods involved in the pilot program are Jefferson, Chalmers, Old Redford, and the Schultz area, Northwest Goldberg, and Springwells.